What's going on guys? Mike Anderson here with the 1% Solution and Living Motion Monograms. All right, today's question comes straight from the mailbag. It says, Mike, the Tools Disk ha has been working great for me and having the client's website pickmymonograms.com has been an amazing tool to send my clients to so that they can pick out the designs that they want. Uh, my question is, once I finish the design, how do I make the three sizes of JPEG or PNG files that you use when you do your own designs for events? Ah, great question. And hopefully today I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that because I get this question a lot and uh, I want to guide you guys through the, the process here. So uh, we're just going to assume that you've already made the design itself uh, and or that you've made the changes to the design um, in Photoshop. So what we have here is just the 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 file itself uh, we've changed the names uh, off to the right side here we've got our layers um, still so we could always uh, make adjustments if we need to position uh, the names just right or left and right um, to line it up so uh, the question is how do we make this three three different sizes uh, and the big mis misconception on this is that we're is people will just change the file size itself and really what you're doing there is you're just lowering the resolution of the the image so if we go up here to image and try a canvas size you're going to see that um, this is one of the hd monograms so we've got it set at uh in pixels 3840 by 2160 as our resolution uh and that is just twice as much as the 1920 by 1080 um, to give us the 4k uh, resolution on there it's not just something that necessarily has to you have to do um, it, it, basically like if your projector is not capable of doing 4k then the, it's not really necessary it might give you a little bit crisper images so that's why I have some of the 4k designs in there if you just want it to, to look a little bit better um, uh, so we're gonna hit okay there so that our, our, our first step is to be able to let me show you guys how to do the JPEG images now when I do JPEG images I'm basically assuming that uh, you're going to be using a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Um, uh, now, check your projector specs. If your projector is 1200 by 800, it might be something different. Uh, if it's 1024 by 768, then what you want to do is start off with that template. So if we went to new, and this is kind of how you would design a brand new template itself. Um, you know what, we're going to go 1200 by 800 and make sure that's pixels, um, resolution about 150 and usually between 150 to 300 is going to be adequate and we'll hit create and that gives us kind of a blank template. So this is, uh, the reason I did this one is because we're going to use this later for, um, our PNG files actually. So our first step in making our JPEG, uh, our three sizes in JPEG, uh, is going to be you want to kind of condense the layers. So step one, make sure you save your file. <laughs> so what we did is we went ahead and saved this in our folder uh, as Thomas and Tiffany as a Photoshop file. And that way we can come back to it uh, if we make any changes to it because we are about to make some changes. So the easiest way to do this step one is going to be if we take all of our design elements on the right here uh, be, and you can to select everything you can either click the top one uh, and hold down shift and then click the, the bottom one below it um, to include the layers that you want or if your layers are spread out what you can do is hold down click the first one hold down your control key and then be able to click the other layers that you want uh, for the uh, to be condensed uh, and then if you right click we're gonna go ahead and find our couple things first off rasterize layer type and the second thing is gonna be rasterize layer style so what that's going to do is if we made any bevel and emboss on this and if we zoom in here we can actually kind of see some of these line designs around the edges or the shadowing. What that's going to do is it's going to preserve that no matter what size we make this. So now we've uh, rasterized our layer. Next step is going to be merge layers. So if I click, have those selected and click merge layers, what it did is it 
actually put all of those into one single layer. So now if I now I've got a hold of the background, if I select the text, uh, let me go back here, text. If I select the text now, that whole image, including the design and everything, stays in one spot. So obviously the first one is going to be the easiest. We're already done. So we're just going to go ahead and hit save as. We'll select JPEG as our format. And what I do is I usually put a little icon next to it. It says large for L uh, or L for large there. We're going to hit save. Now, here's a shortcut for you guys. Basically, if you hit control T with that layer, our text layer selected, you're going to see a little box appear. Uh, and depending on the the version of Photoshop you have, uh, what you're either going to do is just grab the corner and bring it close, bring it up. And if you just grab the corner and you're able to go up and down, left and right like this, that means we have to do, I'm going to hit enter and let's go back. That means that when we hit control T, what you need to do is hold down the shift key. And that's going to, what it's going to do is actually preserve our aspect ratio and keep that image correct. So, to make our three sizes, we're going to shrink the actual text, our design down just a little bit, hit enter, and then grab, we're going to grab the text again. We have to actually gr grab a little section of the white, and we're going to line this up. So another tip for this is going to be what you want to do is I use these guidelines just as my uh, my center so we're gonna find that 1080 here and that's a, gonna be center center of the image and just about right okay so that's our medium size we're just gonna hit save as JPEG if you click on the file it's just gonna copy that name down here We'll change this to medium and hit save. Next, we're going to do the process again. Control T. Let's hold down shift and shrink it down. And if you do this while you are in uh, the control T, which is transform, You'll, you'll actually have these little guidelines, these, these uh, boxes here you can line up with to center the image itself. Uh, we're going to hit Save As. Select JPEG. And that is our small. Now a lot of people ask, okay, wh like what size, how do you, do you do something specific as far as sizes? I, I really don't. I just make it a little, I, you know, a little bit smaller increments at a time um, to give you guys the most versatility. And that's pretty much, we've got a little bit of leeway, a little bit of leeway and some room in there because we can use the optical zoom on the projector to make the image larger or smaller as well. Uh, and so, okay. And that basically is our resizing for the JPEG format. Um, before I switch over to PNG, uh, one of the things I want to do is I kind of want to make this bring this image back. So I'm going to go up here to edit and go step backwards. And that, that way I still have the image a little bit larger. I don't have to um, make it actually make it larger from a lower resolution format. Uh, so up at the top, we're going to go back to our other file that we made. Remember, this was 1200 by 800. And typically I do all my PNGs in that file format because most projectors will uh, be in that in that resolution so uh it it just kind of falls in those guidelines and uh you'll notice that if you're playing your images off a usb stick that goes right into the back of the projector a lot of times uh png files are a lot more efficient and so they have a lot crisper lines uh you don't have as many jagged edges on them. um i wish i knew why but i think it has more to do with the processing power of the projector uh they're not really to be the uh, uh, on com you know computer format so <laughs> or be really strong computers so um, they've got some of the basic software in there uh, okay so we've got that bring this window down here now one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my you can see right behind here I've got the original image and if I just kind of click on the background on the right side I've got my layers here so I'll grab the background I'm just going to drag it into a new one 
that covers all I have to worry about is it covering all the area there and then come click on the background again and we're gonna grab our text and bring it in now that's way too big so I forgot this is an HD uh, so if I hit control and the minus sign, I'm actually going to back out. Now I can see kind of the area where my design starts. Same exact concept. I mean, hit control T. All of a sudden that, that area is highlighted. We're going to hold down shift and drag that corner. Let go of shift. Bring it back into the kind of center here. We'll do it again. And control plus will let you zoom in your canvas here. We hit enter, it kind of locks it in. Uh, I do want to make those guidelines here, and this is 1200, so we're going to go to 600 by 800, so we will go to 400 here. And that way, if I hit control T again, that will give me those boxes in the corners, and now let me line this up perfectly. Now, as you can see here, I uh, the top design and the bottom design is uh, it's, it's slightly off. Um, and it's something that I would probably that I would fix before I actually made my final images. Um, so we've got this is our first uh, large size monogram. We're going to hit save as and PNG. Now none of the files show up because we don't have any PNGs in there. So I usually name these different too, just so I know the difference. Uh, Thomas and Tiffany. And we're going to go large, save. Let's do the same thing again. Let's shrink this down. Control T, hold down shift, resize it. And let's drag it into the center. Medium size. And control T again. Let's do it one more time. Make it a little smaller. We drag it into the center. Looks good. And small. All right. Now, there is a little trick. If you're using software like uh, Grand VJ or something, where you wanna be able to put in something in the background, what you wanna do is actually make your PNG files this way. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step back, take two steps back here, three steps. We'll just keep going back to, okay, we got full size image here. And if you're gonna, one of the things that's cool about a PNG file is that I can go over here to the right and actually take out my background. Now, it may be difficult for you guys to see, but the image is still there. The only difference is we've taken the background out. And if we save this as a PNG file, let's say this, same thing, but no background. Now, this file format, whether you're going to drop it into video editing software or Grand VJ itself, what will happen is whatever video you put behind it will actually show through. So it's going to have no background and it's only going to show these white and our design itself. Then that allow you to if they're if you're not playing a video, then it's just going to be black anyway. So you're not going to see it, um, see a background to it. But if all of a sudden you start playing a video, then the video will play in the background. Uh, so we've got that bring back our background so we can see our images so what did that actually give us let me show you so we've got our folder set up here and if we go into our pick one of our designs here so now we've got our first one and you can see that this is the large size if i go to the next one we've made a slightly smaller image now the canvas hasn't changed so of course what the only thing that's going to happen is that image is going to get smaller but yet your projector is going to stay that same size screen. So if it's just too large for the area you want to project in, you go to the next slide. Uh, it's still too large, go to the next slide and then use your other adjustments to make it smaller. So this will just be a time saver at events. Um, I do highly suggest doing this for your events just so you, it's not something you have to worry about and, and as far as uh, projector placement. Obviously, the closer you get the projector to the surface, 
Um, it's it's going to be better, but sometimes, hey, we've got uh, <laughs> a dance floor in the way or tables or something, and we need to go for a little bit farther back, which means we may need a little bit smaller image to project. Um, so hope this has helped. Uh, we'll see you guys. If you have any questions, make sure you guys comment in the, se in the comment section below. Um, we answer those all the time. Or if you have ideas that you'd like, uh, you know, presented on the future tips, you can email us at info at livingmotionmonograms.com or leave the uh, suggestions in the comment section below. Don't forget if, you, if this video has helped you out, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel because we're gonna, we've got new videos coming out all the time uh, just to help you guys out. We wanna guide you and guide you through the process uh, and get you to the point where you can start doing you know, your own creative ideas uh, on your own without needing the assistance of other people. So, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one.